Hey guys, I just want to make a quick video about the VBOX Unity update. Sorry for my bad English. I just want to help you guys out if you want to get the new update going with the VBOX update. Because there are quite a f just a few videos out there. Uh, they're like these, <laughs> five, five or so. And just one video is a good video, a good tutorial how to set it up. But this is an older version and I, I encountered the problem that quite a lot of code have changed and you can't use the, the code anymore, which is written here. But I hi highly recommend to watch this video because it's a very good baseline and how, to, how the whole system works. And it helped me a lot to get the changes going, uh, what I need to do to get it running. So let's get into uh, what I've what has changed um so um first of all you need to use a different namespace you need to use this one unity.services.vivox that is the first one so uh here it begins and yeah and the whole code is uh, is a little bit different and uh, some things don't work as the other tutorial says so uh how to get it working i'm using uh, unity netcode for my net code um so just for more info um okay okay so using this is important um then what i do i get the player head because you need to position if uh, I'm, i i want to make uh, vbox in the 3d room so in my 3d game so i need to position where the 3d objects is listening uh, so that is the player head and uh, i need uh, the last player head position um we get to that later um then you need to name a, a, a channel name of, of the voice channel then i have a normal boolean if he is in the voice channel currently and yeah you need some channel properties but they are default so you know don't need to set them really um but we get that later normal client id uh, this is um just a thing to get the client uh, the voice client name um and you have it's important that every client or every voice user has uh, in, uh, a unique name so there is no duplication allowed that's why i have a client id here um uh, which is set by the uh, unity netcode okay um then i have a voice slider here that is uh, not that important um and a normal text update so that are, that are the variables uh, you can set them as well um okay okay let's get into the start method if the game is starting he's first checking if it's the local player um because i'm i'm made in multiplayer and otherwise every a person who joins because this is um attached to the player um object of my game uh that is important that he checks that that is a local player otherwise it will try to join again to the voice service if another player joins and that will get some uh, exceptions so don't use this uh, uh, don't uh, use this <laughs> um okay okay but it's important that you're using Unity Netcode. Otherwise, you have to use your uh, check. Check if, if it's a local player. Yeah. And then uh, you use this uh, initialize async. Uh, what this does is um, it's yeah doing some preparation stuff of the software uh, or of the add-on, of the, add uh, the uh, VBOX add-on. And yeah, I'm logging uh, if it's successful. Yeah, here a hint: you have, can use this async uh, in front of your method, and then you can use this await um, section here in front of the of the method, and that will do that. It's waiting until uh, the initialization is um, finished, and then it will get to the next line. So um, yeah, just for you know how it, this is working. Um, that's why it is also uh, taking some seconds. Uh, we will uh, see that in a in a moment. 
until uh, this line appears in game. Okay, so that is the first part and you can also um, see this in the documentation. Um, I will show you that in a second, or I can show you that now. Um, I also recommend you to get into the um, documentation, um, which is the, which is not this, this, yeah. Uh, and here you can read all the stuff. Uh, also here it's the async section and the the um, the code I used. Yeah. So get in there, read that stuff. It's also good to know. To get this running um so what do i do as well i am also logging um when uh, when something logged in or he logged out and i'm listening to that and that enables me to get these methods down here on uh, private void on logged in so if a logged in is successful um i get a debug log and if not i um yeah i wrote another debug log just for for me to know it's nice to have also an unlocked out i have these as well and yeah up, up, up. And then on the update uh what do i do on the update First of all, he checks uh, if the player is in a 3D channel and also if he is uh, a local player. And if that is the case, um, he updates the 3D position of the player so he knows where the player is in the room. And uh, it's a virtual room inside of the Vivox add on, and uh, that handles how far um, the other players are away and which direction. And this works very well. And uh, you can update this uh, next position update uh, value if you want to um, yeah, update the posi position more often. And uh, But I left it at the default position and it's okay. It's working. Um, okay, so what did I do? If the player log in, um, this function is calling. Um, he also checks if it's local player again. Then the client idea set, as I said, um, it is um, get from my network manager and it's using the local client ID of, of my uh, network net code uh, component, which is handling my whole multiplayer. <laughs> engine uh, and that is setting my client id um, next i'm setting the login options this is a normal uh, nothing special i'm just setting here the display name so the username in the Vivox to the client plus client id so this this uh, ensures that it's a unique name and nothing is duplicated so you uh, don't get a duplication error yeah also um, text to speech um, I enable that. You can do it false and uh, nothing special. Uh, here again, we have a wait. You know it's async. I explained it. And um, yeah, then you log into the instance. Um, you deliver the options you set before. Um, yeah, and then you wait this and you join the 3D channel after that. So he waits uh, if this is finished. So you wait that the player is logged in uh, in the Vivox server service, and then you can join the channel. So I decided to join the 3D channel, as I said, and then this method is called. So what we do here is uh, we also have an await thing. Be sure to get the async here in front of the void. Otherwise, you will get uh, an underlying error that this is not possible. Yeah, um, just be sure to write this here. And yeah, what I do here is um, I join a posi positional channel. Um, you have to name it. You can write it, write any name you want. As I said, I set it up here. It's, uh, in my case, test 3D channel. 
Then uh, you have to uh, assign the chat capability. In my case, I only want audio. You can also uh, use audio and text. Um, and on the last point, you have to set the uh, player 3D properties. And uh, the uh, player 3D properties, in my case, are, are not set. So um, I just make this variable and you can assign this. Then uh, default values are, um, are set so or are taken. You don't need to adjust them. So just use this. And yeah, I use, uh, I, I set the variable. Uh, he's in the 3D channel here. Uh, it's just a Boolean uh, for my uh, other stuff. Um, yeah, and then I make a debug log that uh, he has successfully joined. This is just uh, sad if, uh, if he joins because we have here uh, in a wait. So he just he only goes in the next line if uh, this is successful. Yeah. Okay. Um, we have the very the the method update player update player three D position. Um, that is here in the update method. I didn't go over that yet. So we do this now. What do I do here? Um, you update the, the 3D position of the player, so yeah, you know all the time where the player is, and you need to do that. Otherwise, uh, the VVox servers don't know that the player is moving, and yeah, uh, and this is how I got it to work. So uh, you knew you need to set the instance, um, the set the, the <laughs> you need to set the 3D position. And uh, you go with uh, with the object where the player is. In my case, the player head um, game object. And also, you need to deliver the channel name, which is recorded as 3D channel in my case. Okay. Um, after that, I am checking if um, the head position, so the position where the audio is played in my case, is um, not equal to the last player head position because otherwise it will update get updated every uh, frame or every update uh, cycle and i don't want that i ju just wanted to update if my player is moving um yeah that is why i'm always uh, setting this last position and in this case last position is equal to uh, the current position and yeah only in, in that case, uh, it will get updated. Um, this is checked. Uh, so I set it here, but it is checked also in, where do I check it? I check it somewhere. Don't really know, but it's working. Okay, okay. We go further. Uh, it's working. Um, okay, okay. Um, oh no. Uh, I'm updating it every time, but um, uh, I had a debug which is uh, um, which which displays me the new position. You can do that as well. Um, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, I already said that. Uh, set player head position. Um, this is a simple method. Um, it's it's um, it's it's a player gets spawned. Um, this will get get opened by the player by another script, and the player head object is set here in in the script. So my local player object is set, and then uh, also the script will say uh, that it's successfully attached to the player head. So the player head was found. So that is everything of this. Uh, I hope my English wasn't that bad. And if you have any questions, get in the comments. Um, yeah, I quickly go over the Vi uh, Vivox voice manager. 
think I have uh, the standard code here. Um, yes, it's just an instance. Uh, I didn't, yeah, I didn't change anything here. You can have a look how it's looking on my side. Uh, yeah, I didn't use anything here. Um, this is also attached to my player, um, which is toggling the UI. Um, yeah. So here is uh, the login. If the player uh, logs onto the game, this uh, this will uh, call the Vivox player on login method, which is this one. I said that already. Also, uh, it sets the player head position, uh, or it's attached the head. That was the last method I, I said um, in the in the in the Vivox player script. And um, then it just disables the the UI. Okay. So all this is looking on my place. Let's clear this and then just play. I don't know why. What is this with the Vivox secret key? If you know that. Let me know. I hope I hope I can find this out. But um, yeah, that's something for later. Uh, the thing is working for me. I tested it with a friend, so um, that's not nothing to to care about at the moment. Yeah, I'm pressing host. You can see it builds up. Um, uh, the first thing is it, it's it's find the player head and attach it to the script. Then, um, yeah, I'm teleporting to the spawn point, that, but that's another thing. Then Vivox, uh, the initialization, initial, ini, you know, it was successful <laughs> that it started and logged in. Um, yeah, the client here is uh, the client ID, client ID plus the network ID, which is zero. Um, log in successful. And the last thing, just a, a Vivox binding local port. I don't know. That's it's, it's not from my code. It's from the from the package itself. And uh, for the last part, um, the player successfully joined in the three D channel. And now, if uh, if my friend is here, uh, I can hear him. I can hear him in three D in in the three D space. And um, yeah, that's working fine. No errors or anything. Uh, I'm very grateful for the tutorial of um, this guy here. Um, shout out to Digital Plus um, Plus. Yeah, that helped me. <laughs> I wrote it here. Um, uh, I got it working. So um, yeah, check this out. Um, check the documentation out. And I hope my video helped you as well. And yeah, that was it. Uh, have a nice day. See ya.